This show is a part of the podcast network of the Walled Garden Philosophical Society, an international community of philosophers and seekers dedicated to the pursuit of truth, wisdom, virtue, and the divine, wherever they may be found. To find out more, go to thewalledgarden.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Searching with Seneca. Today we're continuing uh, from verse 10 uh, in letter number 22 on the futility of halfway measures. And uh, from 10 to 12 we're going to be reading. Uh, and I know I kind of stopped short in the previous episode, but in these verses uh, we've got a couple of really cool ideas that I want to pull apart that I think are very, very useful when it comes to anybody's uh, philosophical path uh, to kind of that eudaimonic life that we are, that we are seeking in something like Stoicism. Uh, And so I'm going to start reading and we'll, we'll dive in and pick this apart as we go, like usual. He says, quote, Men complain about their ambitions as they complain about their mistresses. In other words, if you penetrate their real feelings, you will find not hatred, but bickering. Search the minds of those who cry down what they have desired, who talk about escaping from things which they are unable to do without you will comprehend that they are lingering of their own free will in a situation which they declare they find it hard and wretched to endure. It is so, my dear Lucilius. There are a few men whom slavery holds fast, but there are many more who hold fast to slavery. End quote. All right, so I want to pause there because if that last line didn't uh, just kick you awake, right, uh, then you weren't listening correctly. Uh, Because what he's essentially saying here is that if you listen to those people who are constantly complaining about the many things that they have to do in life, we all know one of these people, right, or many of these people who are constantly complaining, constantly bickering about all the responsibilities that they have. I have to do this and I have to do that. And this happened to me and then that happened to me. Uh, There's a great line from Jim Rohn where he says uh, that, you know, these people might say to him, "Uh, why does this always happen to me? And why does that always happen to me? And he says to them, well, uh, I don't know the best I can know is that these things always happen to people like you, right? So Seneca is saying, listen to those people who are always complaining, right? Uh, And then you will see uh, that they're actually staying in these obligations and these things that they're complaining about by their own will. And so one thing that you could think about in life is if you feel as though you are enslaved to certain things, if you feel as though you are being tyrannized, if you feel like you have reason to complain about certain things in your life, first ask yourself, right, maybe (laughs) do I need to grow up? You know, do I need to actually look at this differently? Am I just being ungrateful and resentful and angry, uh, you know, because uh, because I'm unhappy with how my life has turned out, right? Maybe you need to look at it differently, but maybe you also need to ask yourself, are you enslaved to these things, right? Or are you actually holding on to these things? It's the same with attachments, you know. We, you could think, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm addicted to this or I'm addicted to that, you know, and it has me in its grasp. But, you know, perhaps if you look deep enough, you might find that you're actually holding on to that thing. You're really grasping onto it. I think this is a very interesting idea that Seneca gives us here that we could probably think about for the rest of our lives is, you know, are we enslaved by things or do we hold on uh, fast to slavery, as he says here? And so he goes on to give us some further advice. He says, quote, If, however, you intend to be rid of this slavery, if freedom is genuinely pleasing in your eyes, and if you seek counsel for this purpose, this one purpose, that you may have the good fortune to accomplish this purpose without perpetual annoyance, how can the whole company of Stoic thinkers fail to approve your course? Zeno, Chrysippus, and all their kind will give you advice that is temperate, honourable, and suitable. But if you keep turning around and looking about in order to see how much you may carry away with you, and how much money you can keep to equip yourself for the life of leisure, you will never find a way out." 
So I really, really love these lines. And they actually remind me of something uh, that I was taught when I was growing up in kind of the Christian Mormon uh, uh, religion, uh, which is that Bible verse where Jesus says that no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service of the kingdom of God. You know, Seneca is talking here about when you decide that you are going to go on this philosophical path, when you decide that you are going to aim at the highest possible good, when freedom is genuinely pleasing in your view and you really want to move towards it, don't look back. Stop trying to see how much you can bring with you on this journey. You can't take it with you, right? You have to trust fully in the process and you cannot be the person who sets his eye to the plow or sets his hand to the plow and then continues to look back. That's something that we're always taught. It's interesting that uh, there's often overflow between uh, or that there's similarities between Seneca's writings and the writings and teachings of Christ, for example. Very, very interesting stuff. But I just love this idea just because I know that it is so important. You know, if you're going to do anything and well, no, not if if you're going to do anything, if you're going to truly seek the highest possible good and try to aim at the highest possible meaningful life that you could live uh, and, and find freedom, as Seneca is saying here, don't look back. It's not serving you and it's not going to help you on your path and it will only keep you from achieving the results that others have achieved uh, by truly letting go of those things that are less important. And so now reading on, we'll see that that quote from Christ saying, you know, those who put their hand to the plow and look back are not fit for the service of the kingdom of God. uh, You know, it's not that out of line with exactly what Seneca is saying here and is almost a very condensed version of this whole paragraph. Because Seneca says, rise to a higher life with the favor of the gods, but let it not be the favor of such a kind as the gods give to men, when with kind and genial fa- faces they bestow magnificent ills, justified in so doing by the one fact that the things which irritate and torture have been bestowed in answer to prayer. So again, what Seneca is saying, if you're going to go after freedom, which you should, and if you're going to seek the highest possible good for your life, then put your hands to work, Right? Do the things that you need to do in order to achieve that, and don't look back. Don't try to bring your former life with you. Allow it to die off, right? Allow yourself to transform through that, and then rise and be clean, right? And uh, and live the higher life with the favor of the gods, and not the fake kind, but the kind that can only come from a truly worthy aim and truly worthy actions, Right, so this is this is very interesting stuff uh, that, that I that I really find highly motivating. Just Seneca really encouraging us to uh, go on this path. You know, you don't have to pull yourself away from your former life immediately, but start on that path. Start by aiming correctly. Start by moving and taking one step at a time towards a life that would be better and more meaningful for you. You can do that. And, uh, and certainly freedom and eudaimonia and, uh, and a meaningful life and a life that is, 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 is worth something uh, to the people around you and, and helpful to the people around you as well. Uh, you know, these are all worthy aims and, uh, and it's not something to take lightly. And when you decide to go on that path, uh, it's very worth thinking about uh, whether or not you're going to uh, be able to go on that path without looking back and trying to bring everything with you. So anyway, in general, I think that what we're finding in this letter is just a, a wonderful account from Seneca on why he thinks that uh, you know, going halfway is just not going to be sufficient if you truly want to get the rewards of philosophy. You're going to have to dedicate yourself to this pursuit, uh, and you're going to have to have the right aims, and you're going to have to have the right motivations. It's going to be difficult, of course, uh, but it is certainly worth it. So, Uh, interesting ideas. I want you to ponder them. I want you to think about what they mean for your life, how they relate to your own philosophical path. And hopefully these meditations are then converted into action towards highly worthy aims. So I'll talk to you next time and I hope you've enjoyed this episode.